Hello and welcome to West Country Wanderings for the Cotswold Way part to do. Today we're going to complete a walk from Edge or rather Edge Common where we finished the end at the end of uh, Cotswold Way part one and we're going to then walk through to the Cotswold town of Painswick to beyond that until we'll meet up with where we're going to start to do Cotswold Way Part 3. So why not come and join me and join me on this walk here in the beautiful Cotswolds. Today's walk starts in a wood dotted with former pits and quarries till we come to an open heathland where there are orchids. We've had some quite rainy weather over the past couple of days. In fact, uh, the Met Office has issued uh, quite a few flood warnings. There's been lots of flooding in uh, Hampshire. Hasn't been too bad here. Quite some heavy rain yesterday, um, which put off any filming. It was a bit of a write-off yesterday for any walking and filming, because it, uh, uh, though you can walk in the rain, it is quite difficult uh, using a camera in the rain. Um, even if you've got a waterproof camera, which I don't have, um, you're getting and get lots of uh, water splotches all over the lens, which is going to make it quite tricksy to uh, to film. Anyway, it's lovely to be out today because we've had so much rain. We've got lovely smells of uh, damp, earthy, ferny, and heathery type uh, smells through the woodland today. And because we've had the rainfall, where we had a, it's some very intense, humid heat in the days running up to that, and the air today is a lot fresher, a lot cooler, a lot fresher, and uh, that makes it certainly a lot more pleasurable to, to walk in these conditions. Now approaching Stock End Wood. When I was filming the uh, Cotswold Way Part 1, when we were going between Far West Strip and uh, the start of uh, the walk here, it's just outside the village of Edge, I'd have heard a conversation. There were uh, two ladies uh, on the Cotswold Way and they happened to, to bump into another gentleman who uh, was, was completing the whole uh, way from Chipping Camden to Bath. He was heading up and they were walking down towards Bath and the conversations went something like this and I thought it was quite interesting which is why I share it with you and it uh, highlights the different approaches uh, to walking along the Cotswold Way. Uh, they, they asked the gentleman um, if he was completing the entire walk and he said that uh, he indeed he was. Uh, I think he was on his third day and uh, he hoped to, to finish at the very end, very late, on day five in uh, Chipping Camden. And uh, I was thinking about that and I'm thinking in five days that means he's going at a rate of at least uh, 20 miles every day. And for me, okay, that might suit some people, but for me, um, I don't think it would suit. Uh, particularly if you're, f because obviously I'm filming as well and taking photographs, uh, documenting where I'm going. I don't think that would approach would have suit me at all because I like to take things nice and slow, I like to explore where I am, I like to absorb the woodland, see what's around me. Uh, in actual fact, although um, I am sticking to the entire route of the Cotswold Way and we'll show that and I'll keep putting maps up as well as we go along, I'm taking my time with this one and as I say, thinking about it, it'll probably turn out to be about uh, 20 separate vlogs. And I think this walk, although uh, the gentleman wanted to do it over five days and perhaps it's because of uh, time away from work and uh, accommodation, that sort of thing. 
I think this is a walk to be savoured and I'm, I'm indeed very fortunate at the moment uh, to be staying in uh, Gloucestershire so uh, the Cotswold Way is uh, pretty much on my doorstep at the moment uh, so I'm very lucky with that so uh, I can take my time with it and uh, do, do it in bite-sized chunks and explore it uh, in a lot more detail. In fact one of the things we're going to be doing in the vlog today is uh, exploring the town of Painswick in a lot more detail which is a beautiful town as uh, as you'll see later in the vlog. On the main path heading towards Edge Common that way and the wood really opens up here. I'm just wondering if this form of an ancient uh, Iron Age settlement I'm not sure I'll need to check that out if I find that in the book I will put a link later on. We're now leaving Stockend Wood and just as we do so just notice the uh, very tall edge of the Cotswold Escarpment here. We're following the uh, Escarpment all the way up to Chipping Canmond and there the uh, limestone rock is certainly exposed. There's May Hill again which we saw in uh, vlog number one where May Hill was actually in front of us. It's now actually behind us and the views have opened out as we've left the woodland here and again we can see right across to the magnificent range of the Mulvans which I'll also be exploring in a future vlog. Now you're probably thinking uh, oh I don't have my hat on today and you're probably thinking why do I wear a hat anyway? You might also be thinking that uh, perhaps it's a visual trope, but maybe it's my shtick here on uh, West Country Wanderings to, to wear a hat, to be seen wearing a hat. Um, well, actually, in fact, it isn't. I know it's on my logo and I do wear a hat and you'll see me sometimes with a hat and sometimes without. And there's a very good reason for that. Uh, before I set out today, one of the things I did check was the uh, UV levels. Uh, about five or six years ago, I was uh, diagnosed with having uh, melanoma and uh, I had a lesion on my uh, left forearm and actually near where uh, I wear my watch and I noticed a uh, mole which uh, well, a pigmentation in the skin in fact which was getting bigger and bigger and bigger quite big um, it was actually the size of um, well pro probably about the size of three watches all put together by the time uh, I got along to see my GP and I was getting quite uh, alarmed about this pigmentation and uh, it wasn't bleeding or itching and that's the certain of the things that uh, we're told to look out for with uh, uh, skin cancer and uh, the GP was very good, he uh, took some photographs of it, sent them electronically through to the dermatology team at uh, Derriford Hospital in Plymouth. I was called in within a few days and uh, they uh, removed it and did a, did a biopsy on it and uh, indeed was told that uh, it was uh, cancerous and uh, in actual fact they had caught it early they said it was spreading fast, uh, laterally fast, not uh, deeply fast uh, which is quite uh, critical and um, from then of course I had a, another operation to because it was cancerous to remove all of the uh, tissue in that area it was obviously quite alarming at the time I had my uh, lymph nodes uh, checked and I've been seeing, going back to Derriford in Plymouth um, over the past uh, few years every three months I've been having checkups I had my last checkup um, just a few weeks ago and uh, I was given a check that was okay but uh, the dermatologist uh, the brilliant team there at uh, Derriford and uh, if anybody from dermatology in Derriford watching this hi guys thanks very much uh, for saving my life um, it, and it's I don't, I don't say that flippantly because uh, without that being caught early I could uh, no longer be here and I'd really like to point out, uh, particularly if you're an outdoor person like me, prefer being outdoor, is to be very, very careful 
of the sun and it is great to be out in the uh, the sunshine and obviously all the vitamin D we've been hearing about with Covid for boosting our immune systems that still applies and obviously getting exercise and eating well but uh, it is also important to protect your skin uh, so I'm an advocate that's why you'll always see me wearing long sleeve t-shirts I don't wear short sleeve t-shirts ever uh, for, for precisely that reason one of the reasons that uh, it may have occurred is because uh, in my younger days I used to do a lot of cycling in t-shirts and uh, it bearded over a period of time and uh, I also went to Australia my wife is uh, Australian went out there uh, a couple of times and uh, I probably wasn't applying uh, the old uh, fact 50 as much as I should so uh, there's a possible reason for that but again it's just to uh, make sure if anything suspicious on your skin make sure that you get it checked out as soon as you can as i was saying sorry the light levels were changing now just coming out of the woodland so i was just manually changing the uh, aperture and iso settings uh, to avoid overexposure but uh yeah and talking about overexposure on the sun make sure you're you're not doing that if you're uh, an outdoorsy type person like me likes to be outside make sure you do uh, check your skin regularly and uh, so i had a, a lucky escape and, and i still take precautions and that's why i wear the hat so if it's a, a day with a high uv and you can still get high uv even if it's cloudy so if you sometimes think oh it's cloudy why has he got a hat on i've checked the uv levels if the high the hat will be on uh, because obviously areas like the back of your neck and your ears are particularly vulnerable to uh, uv light so that's why i keep that uh, on, on my head when when uh, the uv levels are high but um yeah anything suspicious get it checked out with a gp straight away it may be absolutely nothing but uh, if it's caught early then it will save your life detour actually on Rudge Hill which is a natural England triple uh, SI site. In actual fact I was here just a couple of days ago and I uh, was here with uh, some uh, relatives of mine uh, hi Chris and Heather we were up here looking for orchids and we found five s separate species so I'll drop those uh, photos of those uh, orchids that we took and identified up here a few days ago I'll drop that in here but yeah, this is a lovely site, nice and open here. I mean, I don't get me wrong, I love the woodland, but being quite overcast today, it's good to be back out into the light here. So uh, as I say, I've come away from the path, just to have a quick ex explore around this area from slightly off the uh, main Cotswold way track. But we'll be uh, rejoining it again soon. And uh, I'm going to find a seat and have a coffee. And, uh, just walking across the footpath now and uh, just found some of the orchids here. One there. And another one over here. But uh, yeah, this uh, heathland here, just outside Edge, well we're now between Edge and Painswick. It's full of uh, wildflowers. And uh, when the sun's out it's also full of uh, butterflies and moths. For orchids here. to get a confirmation that you're on the right route. Yes, the uh, hill here above Painswick was used again for limestone quarrying. Obviously that's all now well in the past, but it has meant that uh, this site is now completely left over for nature to take over once more. And magnificent it is with all the orchids. We've also got uh, roses here. I'm not a rose expert, so I don't know the uh, various different types. It's got various different shades and hues. Wonderful bird song as well. Gorgeous pink on that there. The raindrops from last night still on it.
We're now leaving Rudge Hill and heading this down across the main road. Also now leaving Edge. That's the main road down there. It takes you back into Stroud. But we're heading away from the busy road down here on the left towards the town of Painswick, which lies over there. The path has become a lot less well defined at this point here, crossing a field, making our way down to the gate down there, which is just there, and then we'll turn right. Now this bit here is easily missed, with a sudden right turn down into this field. So if you come this way, once you've crossed over the road at Edge and past the pub, the Edge Moor Inn, and you're doing the Cotswold Way before you get to Painswick and heading north, make sure you look out for this sudden right turn, easily missed. Oh, this is just lovely. In the centre of the field here, we have this stone. And as you can see, I'll mark it with my uh, <laughs> trusty tripod in my right hand. So we've got the Cotswold Way. We've got the acorn symbol, which is a symbol for the national trails, not just for the Cotswold Way, but uh, other national trails uh, around the UK. And as you can see underneath, Chipping Camden, because we're heading in a northerly direction here, is 47 and I certainly assume that is going to be 47 miles so uh, 47 miles uh, the entire trail is just over 100 so we're not far off the uh, the halfway home we're just a bit further north from the midway point here on the trail And when I started this project on the Coltsword Way, I must admit, uh, unlike uh, most things I tend to have a plan, I hadn't actually got a plan. My plans have gone a little bit awry in uh, Cornwall, and uh, I've uh, landed here in the Gloucestershire, and uh, I was looking through the, uh, the bookshelves, actually, is my mum and dad's uh, bookshelves, and I come across the uh, Richard Sale book on the Coltsword Way. And it was looking through that book, which inspired me uh, to do the uh, this route. But when I started it, I hadn't actually got a plan as to uh, which direction or indeed how to, to film the route or anything like that at all. And uh, what I've now uh, decided to, or what I feel comfortable is going to be the most logical way of uh, progressing the filming is to film from where I started from. So obviously we started off at Far West Strip, uh, just outside of the town of Stroud, and we started north. So then we became, we finished the first vlog just outside of uh, Edge. We've now gone through Edge, Edge Common, making our way to Painswick. We'll see how we get for the rest of the day and how further we get going further through uh, Edge. And uh, we'll then see, uh, oh, it's got a bit dark. A bit dark on that side. <laughs> To apologize for the lighting there. Yes, um, I'll shoot my cameraman. <laughs> yeah, the um, what I'm going to do is after we've done Painswick, I'm going to continue in a northerly uh, direction, doing in sections, and then uh, get to Chipping Camden, and then uh, I'll retrace my steps from Far West Strip, heading in a southerly direction in bite-sized chunks towards the Roman city of Bath, Aquasulis. This 
new house here certainly has a view. I made it to Painswick and uh, sat here in a beautiful churchyard. I've actually got my book which I showed you at the, uh, the last uh, session in vlog number one, the uh, Richard Sale Guide to the Cotswold Way, and I'll just actually read the introduction he says about Painswick because I think it's still very very appropriate. Painswick has rightly been described as the jewel of the Cotswolds and on the way it comes midway in the necklace of the Cotswold Edge. The distinctive grey local stone gives it a somewhat sombre appearance and the houses which open onto the roads and pavements rather than standing back behind gardens a certain formality. But for all that it is the most natural of the Cotswold towns and the most peaceful. It has not been abused by the needs of the tourists and their cars and those who have sampled the delights of its side streets as they should be sampled on foot hope it never will be. Just spotted this in the uh, churchyard here. Tilly the church cat 2000 to 2018. Step into the sun, step into the light. It's a magnificent uh, churchyard here. Famous for its 99 yew trees. Well, the rumour is that there's probably more than 99 these days, but uh, I think the rumour was that if one of the yew trees died then bad luck would be have fold the churchyard. Here at the Walker's Car Park, just to the north of Painswick, at Past Guide House on the edge of uh, Painswick Golf Course, there's actually a tree down, so there's a noise in the background. The road's closed currently, um, but I'm in, in the car park. I mean, I have, I've walked here. I haven't driven here. But I'm still on the route from where we started at uh, Short uh, Shortwood. Now making our way towards Painswick Beacon, which crosses the edge of Painswick Golf Course. So, please stick to the paths. Now above the golf course, looking back across this Painswick Valley.
Now often on West Country Wanderers we see abandoned quarries all over the place. We've seen them in Devon, Cornwall and throughout the Cotswolds here so far. But today on the outskirts of Painswick we've actually come across a live one. And this quarry is still in use. You can see here the blocks being cut from the quarry and also shaped at this site. Beautiful seat here but it is rather poignant in loving memory of Tara Jane Sanders, age 31. The sun sets are now from you. And this is the view from that seat. We're going up and have a look at uh, the trick point shortly. I'm actually going to be stopping here for lunch and we'll have a look at the rest of the Painswick Beacon, so there's uh, May Hill again, now to the, the south of us. And it'll keep going south as we head north towards Chipping Camden. And round there, there's our uh, range of Malvern Hills. Stunning. And below that, of course, is uh, Gloucester. Might be able to just make out uh, Gloucester Cathedral there. looking in the direction of Cheltenham and we have church downhill across to the city of Gloucester and the ubiquitous Mulverns again back around well that's all for today on West Country Wanderings Hope you enjoyed the section from Shortwood, the other side of Edge, to here at Painswick Beacon. Please join me again for the next instalment, what will be from here at Painswick Beacon through to Birdlip, which will be section number three here on the Cotswold Way. Till the next time, take care of yourselves. All the best. Cheers now. Bye bye for now. <laughs>